Hey, what's going on? It's Cat Michaels with 103 GBF, and I am sitting backstage of the Five Finger Death Punch show here at the Ford Center in Evansville with none other than Tri-State's own Jeremy Spencer, live and local right here. It doesn't get any more live and local than this guy. Uh, what's going on? Excited to be back. Absolutely. A few years. Yeah, I, we were here the last time. You were here with Shinedown a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, so, okay, coming home. Is it weird? Do you have like a laundry list of people you have to see in places you have to see? Or are you like, I'm busy, I'm out, I gotta go? Today, my list started at 80 people. <laughs> it, it grew, it was probably closer to 100. But um, yeah, I just now did that meet and greet with all of them. That was great. It's a lot sure. of high school buddies, people I went to school with, and their kids now, so making me feel a lot older. Right, right. Well, we're, we're old. We are. I mean, it's okay. you know. Sure, sure. So in coming home, I've got to ask, is there like... Is there that one place when you come home you just got to go to get, like when I go out of town and I'm gone for a little while, I have that favorite place that I just have to go, I have to get a meal, there's no, you know, no passing by. I don't think so because every, I left so long ago, everything's gone. Everything's gone. Yeah. So what was your favorite then? I don't know, man. You know what I like is that hamburger place. Is that G.D. Rissy's place still here? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, with the shoestring fries. I like that. Hell yeah. yeah. Maybe I should get that for after show food. You should, and some cheese dip, because you can't have the shoestring fries without the cheese dip, right? Yeah, I do like that place. <laughs> All right, so um, I actually posted on Facebook and on the GBF Instagram, and I asked people, like, you know, our boy Jeremy's coming to town. What do we need to find out? Um, I had some, actually, some what I thought were some pretty good questions. Alan says that he loves your cover songs, and he actually wants to know if there's any plan to put together just an album of the cover tracks that Five Finger Death Punch has put out. Uh, we haven't really talked about doing that. But who knows if we will? I mean, sure. now the way people are releasing music, you can just kind of release a song whenever you want. And right. It's instant. It goes out. So yeah. we might experiment with doing something like that. We haven't talked about it. But it's very, and, and you brought up a good point, it's very different now the way that music is consumed by the audience because when we were consuming music at an early age, it was albums and, and the whole album had to be just you know, amazing, and I love, like, I grew up on album-oriented rock, like, I grew up as a, in my younger years, listening to classic rock, so it was, you know, you just put it in, and you, you just kind of zone to it, um, is that different, do you guys focus more on putting together a whole album, or is it, is it about the individual songs, and each one being a thing? Well, you have to be mindful of how many singles are going to go to radio, so right. you can't have an album full of, you know, MF or b word bombs, or whatever, right, right, <laughs> There are, you know, we have a lot of heavy tracks, but we also have some songs that are more mellow. Um, but we always focus on the entire record as a, as a listening piece. We don't right. just go, we need two songs and then the rest can be crap. Sure, it's sure. Like that. I mean, right. We try to focus and make the best record that we can. Obviously. Well, and I know um, visually your videos are always really spectacular as well to go along with the music. Um, do you guys have a lot of input with that or is it, do you bring in your, like your video guy and be like, here's the music, here's what it means, do something cool? It's always the concept that we'll come up with, um, and then you know they embellish it or whatever. But sure. It's always something that we fully come up with and then share with them. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so Anthony, Anthony brought up uh, your old band. He made a cornucopia of death reference. Yeah. He wanted to know if you still love maple syrup. Of course. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, uh, Chris. What a great question. <laughs> I thought that was obscure, right? Totally obscure. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I get the reference, and that's cool. I, I just love hearing Cornucopia of Death. That was fun times. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so Chris wants to know the most exciting concert or festival that you've been a part of. Like, what's the that most killer moment? The first time we played Download in the UK, Yeah. there was like 90,000. And I didn't wow. get nervous, you know, so, but I was like, okay, my adrenaline. 90,000 people is a lot. I couldn't do that. Yeah, if you start to make a mistake you should think about it because there's so many people you're like okay I, I think I made a mistake or whatever yeah but it was cool because the energy rush I've never seen anything like it or felt anything like that that's awesome and then um Jeremy wants to know where you get your dance moves he follows you on Instagram apparently I follow you on Instagram I've seen you post some crazy shit on Instagram by the way yeah. um but the fans love it our listeners love it I know most of our listeners follow you and yeah Jeremy want to know where you got your dance moves because he may need to take lessons it flows through me I'm incredible I'm the best dancer in the world, it's <laughs> So, it's, you know, he can try, uh, but he'll never reach that height. Only greatness comes along, we're talking once <laughs> every thousand years. Okay, we may have to get you to bust out some dance moves before we're done. How about you just take one of my videos from Instagram? We'll just inject it here, yeah, insert here. Yeah, okay. Um, and then 
I want to know what your strangest fan interaction, like the weirdest, because fans, and even in radio, there are some fans, they're a little strange. So I can't imagine on the scale of, of celebrity where you are, you've had to have had some strange things. I, we had something weird that happened on stage. We, there was a part in our show where we invite kids up. Right. And this very little, small person, or it looked like a kid. Sure. Like a baby came up, and we did our thing, and as the kids were leaving, our security, the, the small person, was like, not going anywhere, and our security guard, who was this huge, 270 pound muscle guy, picks up and goes, whose baby is this? And, and he goes, put me down, asshole, I'm a midget. Oh my God. Yeah, that <laughs> That's great. Oh, no, that's fit. Like, visually, I can just, I can see it. That's amazing. We're all kind of laughing because we kind of knew, but at the same time, if you, he didn't, he's like, whose baby is this? Put me down, asshole. I'm going to make it. So, that happened. I, didn't, I didn't mean no disrespect, but that did happen. But so that, no, it's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Um, okay, so, I know you've got, um, you have a memoir you wrote a couple of years ago that came out. That's kind of cool. Um, what, what sparked that? Like, what made you go, you know what? I'm going to write a book. You know, it, wasn't supposed to be a book. I got out of rehab and I wanted to just put my energy in a better place. I needed to fill my time and reprogram myself on how to spend my sure, time. Sure, sure. So I thought, I just want to kind of write about my experiences. It's kind of therapy. It was right, therapeutic. Right. So then I thought, you know, I'll just start from my earliest memory. So I just started writing, writing it chronologically. And then I'd read it back at the end of the day and I would laugh at some of it. And some of them sure. like, I was disgusting, man. I did. Right. But then I was I showed it to my dad and he's like, actually, you could probably do something with this and actually help people. Right. If you release it like this, you will be ostracized. <laughs> horribly offensive. Sure. So he helped me with it. And then we I ended up getting a book deal. I didn't even mean to. It just, it just kind of happened. Kinda and then it landed on the New York Times bestsellers list. That's crazy, right? Yeah. So I'm like, I just laugh. I'm like, wow, proving standards have fallen. Here's Jeremy Spencer <laughs> That's awesome. Now, the new album um, actually does drop tomorrow, Five Finger Death Punch. Uh, so wherever you consume your media from, whether it's iTunes, Google Play, or you actually go out and you buy a physical copy of it, which is how I like to consume media, um, and Justice for None. So when you're dropping a new album, I mean, you guys you guys are pros now. Like, this is, this is seasoned veteran stuff, but do you still get that little sense of, like, giddy excitement of, oh, my God, we're dropping, dude, we're dropping an album. Normally, yes. This one was supposed to be out a long time ago, but we had legal dispute with our record label. And that delayed everything like sure. a year. So it's, we're really ready for this record to come out, but we're not giddy excited. We're like almost angrily put yeah. the record out. So it's coming out <laughs> tomorrow. We're so excited for everyone to hear it because they've been asking, where is it? When right. Is it and we're like, well, we don't know because we're in a lawsuit. Uh, <laughs> we got all that ironed out and everything's cool. Finally dropping tomorrow. I mean, there's been like three or four songs out there already, yeah. but now the full thing's available tomorrow. Sure. Everywhere. Everywhere. Around the world. Yep. Very cool. Do you have any parting words, anything for the audience that you, you just, you got a burning desire to get off your chest? Yeah, you should buy that record tomorrow. And just for <laughs> none, May 18th, it's tomorrow, we need to have tomorrow. a number one debut album for the first time. That would be nice. Let's put heavy metal back on top, shall we, people? Thank you. There you go. So, uh, author, drummer, Five Finger Death Punch co-founder. Best dancer in the world, Jeremy Spencer. Jeremy, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming back to Evansville and visiting. Of course, thank you. See ya. Thanks for watching the GBF YouTube channel. If you liked what you see, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and then check out more videos from 103 GBF.